What's going on? A little bit of a different video here. Uh, not going to be making anything out of metal. Instead, we're going to be 3D printing something out of resin. This is my Elogu Mars 2 Pro 3D resin printer. Uh, my wife actually bought this for me for Christmas and it's only 300 bucks on Amazon and the stuff you can get out of this is amazing. So in this video, I'm going to go from start to finish from the computer to printing and show you how easy it is to 3D print something. Uh, I know this can be a little intimidating for some people, especially with the resin and working with the liquid and how it all works. Uh, it's really easy, especially after you do it one time. What I'm gonna be printing is, this is a pit crew felt, and the rear changer, the rear tire changer, usually has like a little hose clip uh, attached to their belt, keeps the hose, that way they don't go down and sit down and sit on it. Um, that's what I'm going to make. I'm gonna draw up one. I have an idea for one. I'm gonna try it out, let someone test it in practice. It doesn't matter what I'm making because uh, this is gonna to apply to anything and you don't really have to be able to know how to draw something on the computer because there's files you can download. So don't even let that stop you. But we're gonna be going from start to finish from no design to a printed piece in this video. Okay, I'm gonna open up Fusion 360 here. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time with how I'm actually modeling this. Maybe that'll be a future video. This is more just about the workflow. I'm gonna quickly model this up and then I will show you the next step uh, to get it to the printer. Uh, you don't have to do this, like I said, this could be something you downloaded off the internet and you would import it into here and do this same process at the end. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Um, the hose will go right through here, and then this will bolt or rivet to the belt. Uh, if you were to just download a model off of a website like Sketchfab or something and import it into Fusion, it would look just like this. It'd be a 3D model, um, but these the smoothing is kind of a simulated smoothing, so for it to be printable, we have to turn this all into a 3D mesh. To do that, you're gonna go over to where it says bodies and since we only have this one body you can see if i select it this entire thing is selected and you right click it and hit save as stl and that's going to open up this menu right here and you don't really have to change anything format binary preview mesh you can look at it see this see what it does it pretty much makes all these little tiny flat surfaces and makes it look like it's a rounded surface um, it shows you how many triangles was there and we have refinement set to high if you if it's not critical Or you don't care about the level of detail. You can lower this down. It'll make the file size smaller And here's some more options here that I have not messed with any of this and that's it hit ok and choose a file location Okay, after it saves the file you're gonna need to open some kind of slicing software. Uh, I use Chidu box. Uh, it's a free software I'll leave a link to it down below as well. And I really like the way this works. It's pretty simple. Once you get it open, first thing you want to do is go to settings. Uh, since we're using the Esun Tough resin, I'm going to go to add new printer. And if your printer is in here, it makes it super easy because it puts all the default settings. So we have the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. Looks just like that. Adds it, puts in the default settings. For any of these parameters that you want to change, I would suggest just going to the resin manufacturer's website and finding any of this, or just run the defaults and see how it goes. The defaults are usually pretty good. Yeah, this is already what the website says the resin density is. Resin cost, I don't really care about that. Uh, machine, this should be all the defaults for that printer. For print, so this is the resolution it's gonna print at. 0.05 is good. For exposure times, the eSun website recommends bottom exposure of 20 to 30 seconds. So right now we're at 35. I guess I'll lower that. And then eight seconds 
on every other layer. So this needs to come up. And then I can hit edit profile name. So when this is selected, this is what it'll be using. You can close this out and import the model, open the file, open the STL file we made from Fusion 360, hit open. Something I forgot, see how tiny this is? That's not correct. So as far as true to box goes, its default measurements are metric. Uh, you can draw in either one, but you don't have to re -all, redo all this. All you have to do is change your document settings up here and change the units to metric. And then we're gonna resave that STL file and then re-import it and it should be fine. So that's one problem you might run into if you're using Cheeto Box and standard measurements. See there, now we're the right size. Um, for this one, I want to try to print two. So I think if I take this part and rotate it up, I don't know if this is gonna be the best way to print it and I wanna move it up. I wanna make two, so I don't have to import it twice. You just have to have it selected and hit copy right here. And we'll have another one. Okay, so now they're obviously floating. This will be upside down. This is the plate of the Elagumar, so that's actually like this. Uh, so we need supports that it's gonna build off of here and hold all this in. And in Chidu Box, it does that automatically right here. Just go to this. Um, I'm gonna do medium supports since these are pretty bulky. Sorry, I wanna select both of these. Medium weight supports, you have light, medium, heavy. I don't know, maybe, maybe we will do heavy. These are pretty beefy stuff. And once you have that selected, you just have to come down here and click all and it's gonna add everything it thinks it needs. Just like that. The way this does this down here makes it much easier to pull off the build platform too when we're done. Okay, once it's looking like this, all you have to do is click on slice. You can see that our settings were saved, eight second exposure time, 30 second bottom layer. Hit save. And you can go to open folder so you don't even have to locate it. Once you save it, it's gonna be this CTB file and you're gonna have to put it on a flash drive that you're gonna take over to the printer. This is a good time to talk about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Whether or not you want to learn a new skill or expand on one you already have, Skillshare probably has a class for you. For example, maybe you wanna get into making your own videos, but you're not sure how to edit them. Well, there's a great starter class just like this one for Adobe Premiere Pro teaching you everything from the basics of how to get started to pro level editing techniques. Skillshare has tons of classes across illustration, graphic design, photography, video production, and a ton more, all for less than $10 a month. So if you're interested in trying out Skillshare, the first 1,000 people to click the link down in the description will get a free trial of their premium membership so you can start exploring your own creativity. All right, I'm over here at the machine. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna be using this eSun hard, tough resin. It is not water washable or anything, so we have to clean it off with some alcohol when we're done. Elegu Mars does sell their own water washable resin, which is, might be a good place to get started since you don't need any chemicals to clean the part when you're done. Um, either way, everything else is pretty much the same. This is pretty much how the printer ships, just with some protective stuff in it. This is the build platform, so it actually builds upside down since the resin goes into here. This is the actual tank that you pour the resin into. Uh, it's aluminum and then has a clear plastic on the bottom. This is an LCD screen that actually blocks out the light that comes through and hardens the resin just in certain areas. And that LCD screen blocks off the areas that it doesn't want it to harden. Only thing I did is I put a little couple pieces of masking tape right here because I read on some form that this can kind of get like a suction effect to the LCD screen. I don't know if it does because I put those on right away. Don't know if they help or not. This build platform is adjustable with these two screws. If you break them loose, this will swing around 
like this. So now you can see it, it's loose and it needs to be perfectly parallel with the screen. So to do that, you come into the menu, go to tools and select home. And you're supposed to put one single sheet of paper right here between the screen and the build plate. Once it's down, you know it's squared, you can tighten these up. I know this is this machine specific, but I'm sure a lot of this applies to other resin printers. And then you wanna check the resistance and it should drag out evenly on both sides. Not too tight, not too easy, which this one does. If it doesn't, you can bump it up and down until you get a desired resistance. You don't want the paper to be impossible to pull out and you don't want it to pull out loosely. Once that's done, you can raise it back up and then put the resin tank back in. It's important to make sure the resin's all shaken up so nothing's settled or separated and then just pour it into the resin tank. I'm gonna fill this up to the max line because I'm making two parts and they're both pretty thick and we'll strain out and save the extra at the end. To get the actual file on here, it's pretty easy. All you do is take that USB that we created earlier, goes right in the front, go to print and you just find the file. So right here I have it in belt clip V2 and it's actually there, belt clip V2. Um, if it wasn't, this would be like all the files that are, or folders that are on the USB. So I made a little Among Us guy before. Here's belt clips, belt clip V2. And it shows the parts right there. And all you have to do is hit play. The build plate is gonna automatically lower itself down in and it'll start doing it layer by layer. So you can see how relatively easy this is, especially if you downloaded a model and that's all you had and you just threw it on the USB, like there's really not much to it. Just to keep dust and everything out of here, put the cover back on. And right on the LCD screen, you can see exactly what layer it's on, how much time remaining there is. Right now it's creating the little base plate that it's gonna build the support structures off of. So it'll build those little flat plates and then the little support structures and then start making the parts. You can see that this has an estimated time of nine hours, 11 minutes. Okay, and about nine hours later, uh, this was done printing, but this has actually been sitting here a couple days. I had to leave so we will see how this works. So once something's done printed uh, with resin you have to first wash it and then you have to cure it. This is a washing and curing station by Elegoo. Uh, it's not necessary. You can just cure this with sunlight. This just speeds up the process, makes it more consistent. There's two ways to set this up. Uh, this is just 90 percent isopropyl alcohol and then it has this little agitator in the bottom that this thing will spin. It's just normal isopropyl alcohol from a drugstore. And what's cool about uh, this is you can take this off right here and put it right onto here and then put it in like this. I don't know if I have the height set right. No. Once the timer's done, uh, about three minutes, three and a half, whatever. The longer you do in alcohol, it seems like it dulls the prints. So I don't know if there's a better chemical to use, but the isopropyl alcohol does get them really clean. So that's just what I've been using now. Uh, you can wear gloves during this. You do not want to get any of the resin on your hand. So if you're doing anything that involves touching it, especially before it's clean, make sure you're wearing gloves. This is just water. Looks like this won't really fit in here. So I'm gonna throw some gloves on and pull it off the build plate. Like I said, I don't wanna actually touch any of it.
Okay, once they're rinsed off, I'm just gonna take these and let them air dry. Once the parts are all cleaned and dried, it's time to cure them. I looked it up on the Eson website and it doesn't really give an exact time. It just recommends nothing more than an hour. Um, so I think I'm gonna do about 40 minutes. Like I said, you could just set this out on a nice sunny day, but uh, since I have this, it works nice. I wanna make sure they both get evenly exposed. Change the mode, up the time. Okay, 30 is the max. So maybe I'll do 30 and then another 10, uh, we'll see. The eSun website also recommended putting it in the oven for 20 minutes at 50 degrees Celsius. I think that's a tough resin thing because it's not typical for just your standard resins. So you probably won't have to worry about that, but just check out uh, your manufacturer's website to do it exactly how they want to get your best performance, especially if you're making uh, functional parts. Once it's done curing under the UV light or out in the sun, the last thing, all you have to do is remove all these support braces. So I have some flush cuts here and these, this pair actually came with the printer. Super nice. It does leave these little marks where it was attached. Uh, I don't know enough to know if you can sand that down. If you were going to paint this, I'm sure you could sand this out smooth, make it look more like this side, and then paint over it. I'm not sure if there's a way to sand it and leave it this color. That's more research I need to do. This is probably like the fifth thing I've printed on this printer. And I just wanted to make this video to show you really how easy it is. And um, to not be intimidated by resin printing and the results that you can get out of it. I mean, you really can't barely see any layer definition, like what you're probably used to uh, seeing with the filament printers. And that's it. I mean, it's essentially modeling it up and exporting the correct file, moving it to the printer. There's no tooling or any of that to worry about. Um, so I'm gonna put this one in the oven and let someone try it out at pit practice. If you're new to my channel, I normally make welding and fabrication videos here on YouTube. Um, Want to get more into general making and expand the stuff we're making on this channel. So if that sounds interesting to you and you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, or if it helped you in any way, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, and I'll see you next time.